Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today's topic is good grief. So I'm going to talk about something that most people don't want to talk about, and it's the subject of grief, but I want to talk about it in two different ways. So first I want to talk about how to grieve and how to get through the grieving process from what I've learned. And then I also want to talk about how to love someone through their grief. So the first thing I need everyone to understand as they're going through their grief is you can't rush grief. You just can't. You have to accept the fact that this is your journey. This was the cross you were given to bear and that at the end of the day, it is what it is, um, but how you deal with it is how you deal with it. And take comfort in understanding that it's your journey and that no one can really tell you how to get through that process. Some of the things that helped for me and my grief was journaling, therapy, um, traveling helped, um, like taking a day trip to the beach and just having alone time to be able to process it, having a good support system who doesn't make you feel like you've told the story one too many times, um, crying it out, honestly, just allowing yourself to feel it. There were times where I'd be at work and I would run to the bathroom just to cry. There'd be times where I would cry every single day and being okay with that just being a part of my journey I would cry on my way to work I would cry on my way home from work I would listen to really sad music and I would kind of just purge out those feelings songs that would remind me of the 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 loss and that sounds really um sounds like I'm asking for pain but really and truly it helped me process the pain um and deal with it. And there were a couple of songs that I would just listen to on repeat and scream and cry my heart out really and truly. But I also remember the very first day that I went without crying at all. Like that was a celebration for me. And that was a huge win. Um, Coloring actually was really helpful in my grieving process because it helped me escape my thought and channel it into a productive way. Also, writing was very productive in channeling that grief. But whatever it is that makes you feel at peace, whatever it is that helps you get through that grief, do it. Unapologetically. Unapologetically. And I took control of my grief by controlling who I allowed to know of it. And although people in my family knew without me telling them, I was not willing to have the conversation until I was ready to have the conversation. That was my choice. When I lost my first son, it happened on my birthday. By the time we got to dinner on my birthday, everyone knew. And it was difficult to process when you're getting the sympathy and the guilty looks. Not guilty, but um, empathetic and... You could just see it on everyone's eyes that everyone knew. And it was really difficult to process. So when I lost my second son, I decided that I was going to be more strategic in how I allow people to know. And even though other people knew before I told them, I was not willing to have the conversation. So I was ready to have the conversation. And I was ready to process and deal with it and all of that. Second part, how to love someone who's grieving. This is something that I think is not talked about enough. And I think it's not talked about enough because people who are grieving don't feel strong enough to say what they need. And I'm not going on here to say that I am a spokesperson for all who grieve. Point blank period. But through my grieving process, I realized that a lot of the things that are commonly said to someone who's grieving are maybe not the most effective. 
some of the most commonly used responses that were the most painful was, it's all a part of God's plan. The reason that was so difficult, and while it may be true, it was difficult to receive because it then challenged my relationship with God. Because what it told me was that I serve an all-powerful God who can do literally everything and chose to watch my children die. Like, that was a lot to take in. And it took some time and it took some processing and it took some healing to be able to get through that and to recover from my relationship with God. But every time I heard that it was God's plan and things of that nature, it really challenged my relationship with God. The other thing was for those who maybe miscarriage or have difficulty getting pregnant or um, lose a child hearing, oh, you're young, you can just have another. Oh, you're young, you have time to get pregnant again. You can always try again. Was very hurtful because while it's true, I can always get pregnant again and I'm young enough to still, you know, try again. It doesn't do anything to heal the hurt and the loss of that child. And it was really difficult to hear sometimes, to be able to look people in the eye and say thank you when you've said something so hurtful. Because you realize that they're trying to be helpful. You recognize that they're trying to say something that's helpful. Um, But it hurts. It really, really hurts. What I can suggest to people who have people in their lives that are grieving that they care about um, one, do not offer unsolicited advice. Don't tell them how to fix it. Don't tell them what they need to be doing. And definitely don't put a time frame on their grief. For sure. Um, three weeks after I had delivered my sons, I was told that I should be okay. I should be in a much better place. I shouldn't be grieving anymore. It was the most heartbreaking thing I had ever heard. It really was. Because A, three weeks to suffer through the loss of two children in one month, like, it was unfathomable. Um, But even if it was three years, it's if you've not suffered the loss of losing a child or suffered the loss of losing a parent or suffered... You know, that just you can't tell somebody how to grieve, and even if it isn't a child, even if it isn't a parent, you still can't tell them how to grieve through that. Um, and you can't tell them how long it should take them to get over that pain. But especially if you've never been through that exact pain. Um, but what's funny is the people who had been through suffering through miscarriages and. Um, even abortions, like those were the people who knew it would take, those were the people who were saying, take as long as you need. Those were the people who were saying, it'll eventually get better. You're going to be okay. But right now it sucks. Like, cause they get it. So if you really don't get it, don't tell somebody how to get it. Um, the la- the most important thing you can do for someone who is hurting is to ask them, what do you need from me? How can I help you? I want to support you in this time. Tell me what you need. Understand that that's different from this is what you need. This is what will help you. This is what you need to do. Um, And recognizing that asking the question, because nine times out of ten, people know what they need. But if they're never asked, they may not feel strong enough to share. So guys, I do want to hear from you. If you have suffered from grief and you've gotten through it, put in the comments how you helped, how you got through it. Because sharing how to get through grief, um, I think it'll help somebody who's dealing with it. And they maybe they need suggestions on what to try. Um, so put in the comments how you were able to get through 
grief that you may have dealt with and suffered a loss from. And understand that grief comes from grieving the loss of a relationship, grieving the loss of a friendship, uh, a partner, uh, going through divorce, all of that can cause grief. So it's not just the death of someone that you loved, but you may be grieving something else. So how did you get through that grief? Um, put it in the comments and I hope someone is freed in hearing this comment, in hearing this video blog, but also I hope that someone who knows someone who's grieving um, takes it in and, and help, learns to help someone else.